Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Series 2, or Season 2, Week 0. Or the Lobster Labs, I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are into Round 3. We're starting out with Kima and Parzival Bio, who is not Crow. They are also known as Captain Bio. Not sure why they went for that name, but there you go. Anyhow, first band goes to Kima. They take out Small Supreme Battlefield. Ravaged has been banned by Captain Bio, along with Cobalt. And that le actually, that leaves a rather interesting spread of maps. Anyway, we are last ban, Kima. No, bans one and then picks from the remaining five. Not entirely sure why, but... Whatever, there you go. And Shimmer Shore is banned for what it's worth, even though, again, they can pick whatever they want, so... Yeah. Oh, they pick Shimmer Shore, my bad. And we are ready to go. So, Shimmer Shore. C-Map. Alright, so with that, we are... I'm not quite sure why the first player bans. That's weird. I don't see the game starting. Okay. Weird. What the hell? Okay, we're not getting anywhere here. Yeah, the ban order doesn't really matter. I don't know. I'm not sure entirely. I think maybe coin flip, whoever wins the coin flip, or whoever loses the coin flip, bans three maps, and then, or four maps maybe, and then the other person picks in the remaining five. I don't know. That's the... That seems to make sense to me, because, like, you win the coin flip, you get to get the pick, but then your opponent gets to limit somewhat what gets picked. I don't know. I mean, this is labs for a reason, so, you know, that's kind of how it goes. But... Yeah. Hopefully this works. There we go, all right. Having some minor technical difficulties, but now they are over and done with, and we can get to the game. As the game has indeed started to begin. Parzival going, or Parzival Bio. Ugh. Captain Bio. Ignore the Parzival. No, I guess they... Both particularly like Ready Player One, I don't know. Anyway, Captain Bio going for AMF. Kima going for ships. Because it is a sea map, everyone has to go for ships at least once. And, oh, Kima, is that four cutters? No, just the one. One cutter, two hunters. No mariners, though. Conch Rubber being the opening for Captain Bio, and that is interesting. I mean, it's not a terrible move, it's just... Cam Bio is going to be having to defend against that. It's one of the, it's a move that will pay off in time, but it's a little risky at first. And given how sparse this map is, and kind of how small it is, it's hard to sell. Say, it, it, no. Oh wait, is Spec Chat muted? I can't remember. But I'm not allowed to watch a stream. Don't stream snipe. Also, it's. It'd be distracting. Like, but yeah, don't stream snipe. No stream sniping. I 
I mean, you're allowed to watch the stream when you're not on stream. But you're not allowed to watch the stream when you're on stream, which you currently are, so no. Anyway, Kima. Apply more pressure at the start, and... Let's see if that works out, though. I mean, Duck versus Hunter, I feel like the Ducks are going to win in that numbers. Granted, it's also three times the cost, but still. Problem, of course, being the conch. Which is not being defended. Remember, that conch is like the first thing built. It's pretty important, or should be anyway. I expect that Captain Bio would be protecting it as best they can. Same time, Kima very quickly moving over to the western side of the map to expand a little bit in the hidden way. So that works all right. Captain Bio, however, once again. Wait, boys? Interesting choice. Scallops make a bit more sense considering the way the underwater units work, but yeah, Shimmer Shore isn't really a map where your units are going to get above water, so having to surface to fire is risky, to say the least. But it might work. I mean, boys are strong. Oof, and unfortunately the duck not quite able to get in range of the hunter. So, Captain Bio is going to have a bit of a hard time defending. Actually, they're going to not be able to defend this metal extractor. It's it's dead. Unfortunately, ships are fast. It's like playing vehicles versus bots on a flat map. And, yeah, the ships just win on speed. Thankfully, Conscious can just hold in place and protect themselves, which I don't know why Kima isn't doing, because it's going to last a lot longer if it does that. But, no, apparently they chose to lose their Conch, which, yeah, Conches, when they stay still, get armor. And that's super important. Where are the Scorchers? Not the Scorchers, the... Gah. Not so, why do you play... Ah, the Scallops! Where are the Scallops? Scallops are the units we want to go for here right now. Boys aren't going to do a whole lot of good. Scallops are actually going to do a lot of good. Especially with the submarines coming in. Again, boys can't shoot below the surface. They have to surface to fire. So I'm not quite sure how that would work out. I don't think it would work out well. Right now, Kima in a really strong position to just... Yeah, well, contain Parzival Bio. Contain... Sorry, Cat and Bio. It's gonna be a little iffy, but yeah, they gotta contain them. If they contain them, they'll be fine. If they don't, then... Well, Cat and Bio will be able to actually... do something, but so far they're so behind an economy that I don't even see it. I mean, they've lost metal extractors to harassment. They've... Not really build a whole lot to deal with this stuff. They started Amph and didn't go immediately for Duck Scallop, which is like the only real way to make that work. I mean, now finally getting the Scallop out, but that's not really enough. And on a map like Shimmer Shore, too, it's such a massive map. There's, I don't know if there's a reason to not go ships. Hovercraft, maybe, but even that's risky. If you really like Hovercraft, I could see it. For Amph bots, no. Amphbots make zero sense. They're too slow to be useful on such a wide open map. Disappointing, I was, I'm sure, but that's the thing, is that ships are really fast. Amphbots are not. And there's no choke points in this map. I mean, even with the scallop, even with the scallop, the submarines just don't care. Uh, Captain Bio throws in the towel, Kima takes it, and we'll be moving on to another match, because that was... That was short enough that there's probably every other match remaining. Possibly the other matches haven't even started yet. We'll find out, I guess. Uh, let's see, what's the next one? Well, I want to see MKC and Madcraft, but they're not... But MKC isn't here yet. I don't know where they are. They were here. I think they might have left. Either they thought it was double elimination and they were out, or they thought it was too late and they were tired. I don't know. Well, let's check out Jam Time and Crow. It's on Titan Duel. Oh, we haven't seen Fruity. Oh, you're right! Shoot, actually that would be That would be one to watch. Yeah, 
Good point. Thanks for pointing that out. I thought, oh, we've seen Pudis, but no, we have not seen Fruity. And I think Pudis and Fruity is going to be the most fair match in the entire tournament. So let's watch that. All right, so. Hang out. Shields. Shield v. Cloaky. Pudis. Cloaky, but not a holding a lot of territory very quickly. Being sneaky about some expansions, but not actually being very secure. Fruity and Pudis' commander fighting in the corner. Pudis. Oh, super close to losing their commander. Not really able to hold the southwest. Able to hold the northeast, kind of, but I say kind of. Because, well. I mean, there's nothing really defending it. I guess now there is. There's a couple of lotuses, but lower section is kind of iffy. So, Pudis does have the top, the corners, like the absolute corner expansions, but nothing in the side. Glaive coming in, though. Oof, off of the imp, taking care of the entire shield ball. Beautifully done. I think Pudis... I haven't quite taken the game from there, but that is that is a massive blow. Any more imps on the way? No, we do have a... Oh, no, there are actually indeed more imps on the way. But also, we have an air factory coming up as well, so we are... We're looking at some ma major potential for massive army destruction. For, well, massive value army destruction. Blaze coming along the south side. Should be able to take this out with no issue whatsoever. In fact, is there anything defending the main base? No. No! There's a felon. That's about it. But after the recent nerfs, I'm not sure it's going to really matter. No, it does not. It gets rid of half a dozen glaze, but there's too many left. Still another 18 or so left, which is able to wreak total havoc on Refruti's base. Pudis, I think, has just taken this. Their factory is dead. The base is completely destroyed. There is nothing left. Fruity has lost everything. And Pudis only had to sacrifice a couple dozen glaives to do it. And Fruity throws in the towel. What is that? Short match. Only eight minutes. So, well, we saw Fruity. And we might actually want to see them again in the next round. But, well, there it goes. Short match. Looks like that's going to be the story of round three. Short matches all around. I mean, is Jantime and Crow done? Because I do want to see that. Nope, not yet. All right. Check that out. Mm, yeah, both players want one-on-one, -on -one, so that's all right. All right, and... Match itself is... Mostly defensive. Sheesh. I mean, I know Titan Duel is a map you kind of slowly expand on, but both players being remarkably slow with their expansion. Crow and the Hover able to sort, sort a lot of attacks out. Especially against tanks. Oh, there's the harassment. Daggers coming around the side. Taking out Caretakers. Taking out some Metal Extractors. Not much else, though. Against tanks, taking out Caretakers is strong value. We're going to switch over to Bolus. Possibly Bolus Scalpel. I'll take out some of these tanks, but again, the Ogres are going to be a problem. Oh, Crow throwing away a ton of units into the Ogres. Continuing to lose a lot of that jam time. That's a lot of Gauss turrets. What the? And also, why is that happening? Is that a thing I forgot? Oh, it is. Gah. Jam time losing a lot in the way of... Well, a lot of way of metal and gauss turrets, but I understand the reason. I mean, these units aren't really close up all that often, and Jam Town's commander's gone down. Gauss turrets are usually used against heavier units like tanks, not against a bunch of light units. I mean, yes, line splash is a thing, but it's not as relevant. Crow, however, thrown their own commander into jeopardy, and it looks like that is going to be it for them. Minotaur takes it out. Manning Force is backing up, coming in to try to get revenge, but able to get rid of one Minotaur, which would still be useful, decent value. 
Key thing, though, is going to be being able to get in here and actually reclaim that Commander Corpse. I mean, Jam House Commander Corpse is definitely open to reclaim. Crow can grab that easily. But Crow's Commander Corpse could be reclaimed by Crow. They just need to actually go in and reclaim it. And they don't have any constructors nearby. They don't have any constructors. They don't have any constructors. They have just they had just their commander. Same can't be said for jam time. They got plenty. And they got half a dozen welters all across the map, but there are no quills at all for Crow. I'm baffled as to why, but Yeah, Crow has no quills in queue, no quills on the board. They can't build anything and they can't reclaim anything, and that's huge. If they could, if they had three or four quills, they could be on par with Jam Time, economically speaking. No, I mean, okay, they need more. Okay, they need to build up some energy infrastructure, and then they'd be on par. Oh, okay, there's the one quill. The one quill, which I believe was just recently built. Not sure why it's going for the Scorpion. Again, it, uh, there's so much reclaim. There's 5,000 metal reclaim, pretty much all in, par in Crow's territory. And even if you look at, like, just the stuff that's in his territory more directly... That's like 3,000 metal. That is huge. Send four quills to take care of that. And you are... You're doing... You're sitting pretty. Jam time has got nothing on you. I mean, again, you need to build some additional power structures, but that's about it. But unfortunately, Crow seemed to have been relying entirely on their commander and had no quills left. Lost them all. That's opening everything up. Jam time's just able to eat this entire field of metal. Nothing is stopping them. I mean, Crow is going to try, but it's just not enough. Like, this this force is simply not enough. Too many defenses. The units they're fighting are way too strong in their own. It's not going to work, I'm afraid. Now, without these forces, I mean, again, there's nothing to really push forward, but at the same time, the Kodachi's coming in here. One quill is coming out of the base to try to start rebuilding, but it's... It's not enough, and Crow realizes that, throws in the towel, and Jam Time takes it pretty much entirely, because Crow didn't have backup constructors. They had their commander and not much else. They check that's where the commander died. Yeah, the army died a little afterwards, but... Like, killing the commander, it would have been fine if there had been quills, like, th like I said, three or four quills around the back reclaiming all this stuff would have easily turned the game back around. But that didn't happen, so Jam Time had it. So that is... I don't know if that's... If that might not be around through. I think MKC is going to be DQ'd. So... Probably it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think MKC is just going to get DQ'd. Back to downtown Cliver. Oh, wow, they're still going. This thing like Back to Dante has a tendency to get into really long games. Might as well check it, I guess. I mean, it's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it all into the YouTube description, but hopefully I will. All right, so. Back to the match, and we have tanks. Tanks and rovers, a little bit more typical. Looking kind of like this. Bashi down to his advantage. So again, this match was 16 minutes in by the time I walked, in the, walked into the room, got the cat getting caught up, so. I'm not sure how this is supposed to be going. Like back down, just slowly but surely building up. Expanding in their commander around the map, just like last time. Oh, is that massively nanolithed? Yes, it is. What's this thing's BP? 22 build power, so it's it's got a caretaker on board, pretty much. Oh, same time though, base trade coming in here. Cliver's able to wipe out back down his factory and wipe out back to down his commander oh that sucks wait oh the match must have just ended 
All right, well, unfortunately, that is how this game goes. So, yeah, not sure who won. But that was the thing that happened. Oh, okay, Bakhtu Dante apparently took it, according to the chat. So, we're going to be moving on to round four. Since I'm sure MKC is just going to be DQ'd. Anyway, I'll well, head on to round four and sort out some of the details for what's going on there. Until then, stay tuned. <laughs> 